Hallelujah. I'm just excited. I'm excited about waking up this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bishop covered everything that I, I said that I was happy for before I even got here. Just waking up, having my strength, having the activity of my limbs, being in my right mind. Hallelujah. Being able to have all of my senses. I can see, I can hear, I can taste, I can smell, I can feel. So I invite you to praise the Lord with me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to take it back a little bit this morning. So feel free to put your hands together. Get up on your feet if the music moves you, if the spirit moves you. Hallelujah. Let's have some church. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Have you tried?
There is none like you. Hallelujah. Nowhere. Hallelujah. We lift your name up, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. search throughout eternity, but we will never find anyone that takes the place of our God because he is great. He is greatly to be praised. God has done so much for us. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. That's why there's none like our God. His right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Again, why there is none 
not like our God. He's the one who loved us for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's why there is none like our God. It is the God who created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's another reason why there is none like our God. He is the God who stitched us. He formed our frames. He knitted us together within our mother's womb. That is why there is none like our God. Oh, we could go on and name all the reasons why there is none like our God. So you can search all you want to do the search, but you're going to come back to the same place, the place from which you left and discover still that there is none like you, O oh God. So we give God worship. We give God praise. Hallelujah. We just worship him. We worship him. We worship him. We worship him. There is none like our God. And we worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your name is great. Hallelujah. Your name is awesome. There's none like you. Hallelujah. And we worship you this afternoon. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, it's a beautiful spirit here in this place. Oh, and I can see the presence of the Lord on each of your faces. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, oh Minister Carmen, don't let it go. I just hear the Holy Spirit saying, don't let it go. I know you're off the stage, but, but don't let that presence of God that is heavy on you, don't let it go just like you were led to go into that. Don't let it go. Stick with it. Uh, I'll tell you like somebody told me years ago, stick with it until you get everything that you're supposed to get from that. Amen. Stick with it. Stick with it. There's an awesome presence. There's an awesome presence. The glory of the Lord is on the worship. The glory on, of the Lord is on the worship. Uh, why? Because the Bible says that God desires that we worship him in spirit and in truth. And he tells us that if we don't do it, the rocks would cry out. And as we used to say a long time ago, I don't want no rocks crying out for me. Amen. Amen. So we worship the Lord. We worship the Lord. Let's worship him uh, in our giving church as we are a giving people. It is a part of our worship. Uh, we give God of the fruit, uh, our increase. Uh, we bring our tithe. We bring our offering. Uh, we believe in the blessing uh, that comes with tithe and offering. It is the blessing of the word. Malachi says, will a man rob God? It says, you have robbed me in tithe and in offering. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now. Herewith says the Lord of hosts, and see, will I not open you the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive? We do it because it is an act of obedience. We do it because we understand the principle of tithe. We understand that as long as the earth remains, that Genesis said, seed, time, and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease. And so that's why we give. So with that, we affirm and we decree and declare, Father, we know that you have a financial plan for the believer called tithe and offering. At this moment, we set our heart to, to tap into your financial plan for us. The enemy will not rob us anymore in our finances. In the name of Jesus, by faith, we are at this moment planting our financial seed into your field. We're doing it because we know that it is a biblical truth that in return for our financial faithfulness, you supply all of our need and provide above our need. And so at this time, we just take a moment to celebrate and to give, amen, as our gifts are being received this afternoon. We give God praise as we give our gifts, amen.
God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you, Father. Those of you that are giving uh, by Cash App, uh, those of you that are joining us virtually, our Cash App is Dollar Sign Thinking Church. Dollar Sign Thinking Church. And so thank you for your liberal giving. Those of you that are physically giving here in the sanctuary, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Thank you as we are receiving those gifts. They are being received and we're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful to God be the glory for the things he has done. Hallelujah. He is mighty. He is mighty. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, thank you, Father. We give God praise. We repeat together. We have given, therefore we receive. We have given cheerfully, therefore we receive cheerfully. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall it be given to us cheerfully, says the word of God. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you for receiving. Thank you for giving. Uh, we're grateful to you. We're grateful to the Lord. Thank you, those of you that are joining us virtually, uh, Facebook and Zoom. Good to have all of you worshiping with us as well. It's time for the Word of God. Amen. Get your Bibles. Get your tablets. Get your phone. Amen. As we worship the Lord together in sharing in the Word of God, learning of God. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Come on, just worship the Lord. We're excited about the word because our God is mighty. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Oh yes, it's a good atmosphere. John chapter 20, just as we're in this atmosphere. Chapter 20 and verse 29. 20 and verse 29. Verse 29 said of John chapter 20. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me and have believed, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The word of God for the people of God. And again, we say thanks be to God for his word and for his namesake. Uh, I love God's word. I love God's people. I love what God's word says to us. It never ceases to amaze me that no matter how many times you see something in God's word, it's almost like you're seeing it again for the first time. I say that so often because it happens so often that we see the word of God and it looks so like we've just seen it again for the first time. And so as we approach this text this morning and this afternoon or whatever time you may be viewing this, if you are viewing it after it has posted uh, on YouTube or Facebook, whatever time it is the right time for you to receive the word of God. I want to just talk to us from a subject uh, this afternoon. And yet we believe. And yet, we believe. If I would have had a uh, overarching uh, look and view and even title for this message, it would be the black church at the center of black history. The black church at the center of black history. And yet, we believe. 
and yet we believe. As I was thinking about so many, and uh, as Lady, uh, a Reverend Lady, uh, will share in the upcoming weeks, uh, and have shared, and will share about some of the uh, little known or, or remembered or lifted up uh, things that concern us and that uh, are great to us regarding our history. She's going to lift up those things. And I was thinking of uh, several things. I've been reading a book that, uh, that I won't mention right now because I will at some point uh, share this book and even uh, the, the theme of the book and the person the book is about. But I begin to think about so many things. But as I was reading and thinking about even sharing, uh, as I will at some point, uh, from that book, I came back to this point. That right in the center, so many times, what you missed in times past or what you may miss is staring you right there in the face. And while we are looking for people many times to talk about when it comes to black history, and I'm one of those people, I'm kind of funny about it because, uh, you know, it, it's the February, it's the month of black history, and the, as a, as a uh, pastor and a leader, as a uh, teacher, as an instructor uh, in a college, many times I have to do my due diligence and I do my uh, presentations and my postings and all of that during the month for my students and even uh, for our church and for uh, our people. But many times I have to remind us that why it's so kind of strange to talk about it because we are it. It's like you're talking about something that is your life. It's, it's hard to talk about it from a place of history. It's hard to talk about it from a historical standpoint because literally you are it. When we talk about black history, we're talking about you. We're talking about all of us that are living it out, even those that are of other cultures or of the dominant culture. It is still, you are living out this history because our history is American history. It is, it is the thing that causes America to become great. America is not great just because it is America. America has become great because of those who have caused America to become great. America has become great at the hands and on the backs of those who caused America to become, to become great. Because if you look at just the, just the whole uh, scheme of things, how it all came to be, it wouldn't be so great. Oh, if we, if we deal with the truth of the matter, right? If we look at, at the reality, especially for the reality uh, of those who were lesser served in this history, it, it is not a pretty history. It is not a great America. It is not a beautiful picture. For many, it is an ugly picture. It is, for many of us, as we look at even our history, those of us that especially black and brown people and Native Americans, it is a history that is rooted and things that are not so pretty and yet here we are here we are living out this history so to talk about it for 28 days in February is really difficult because the truth is uh, we're living it. it, it is our life it is not 28 days it is 365 it is 24-7. It is the history that we live with. And when we look at the fact, as we looked at the church, I realized that the church is at the center of that history. The church is at the center of that history. Why? Because in spite of, and even looking at all of the truth in that history, and yet we still believe. And yet we still believe. It's, it's, it's a tough it's a tough uh, 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 a message to pull through and to pull together because there are so many dynamics that flow within this. So just let me lift up the text just for a second and then, then I'll kind of go back a little bit. I, I, I may not be uh, in line with all my systematic uh, theology students and, and I may not be in, in line with everybody with your, your hermeneutics and, and all of that, but, but what I want to do is help us to understand that it is a real reality. 
If you are sitting here today listening, listening to me, if you're watching me, if you're physically here, if you're watching visually, many of the people who will watch this and who will hear this are a part of what we know to be the black church. Yes. Yet here we find Thomas. In the scripture in John chapter 20, Thomas has been one who was left out of the visitation of Christ after the resurrection. Christ had visited the disciples already and Thomas had missed it already. But here is an opportunity getting ready to happen that Thomas didn't realize because the disciples said, we've seen him. He lives. He, 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 he rolls from the, from the grave just like he said. Thomas said, oh, you know, I hear you. But unless... Unless I see him for myself, unless I put my hand in, the, in his hand, unless I touch his side, unless I go through all of this, I will not believe. So Jesus appears, appears to the disciples again. And this time Thomas is there, goes through this whole uh, 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 this whole scenario. And Jesus says, look, uh, and the scripture in John never says that he actually touches Jesus. Never said he did, but Jesus tells him, go ahead and do it. And it never says that he did it. But what happens, he gets to this point and he says, I, Lord, I believe. He said, Lord, I believe. How do we know he said, Lord, I believe? Because look at the text. Look at the text. If we go back to the text, it, it tells us uh, real clear. It says, he says in this, uh, let's go up to verse uh, 27. Then said Thomas, Put your finger here. Then said he to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. The end of my IV says, my Lord and my God. The mere fact that he calls him Lord and God says that he believes. It, it affirms that he believed. Didn't even have to go through the whole process, but yet he believes. And Jesus says to him, then uh, because you have seen me, you have believed. You believe for one reason, because you saw me. That's why you believe. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Oh, I hear you already. I hear you. You're saying, well, well that, that's anybody that's part of, of the church after the, the ascension. Anybody that believes after the ascension. Uh, anybody in America that's a part of the church. Blessed are they who believe and haven't seen. Uh, but you're talking about the black church. Well, what's so significant about the black church? Well, you got to understand. It's a whole different scenario. Oh, I was sitting in the place the other day. And it was about 98% of folks of the dominant culture. And they were 98%. And it was, it was a couple of us scattered here and there. Uh, 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 and we began to see, uh, they came to the stage and said, oh, we want to show you this beautiful uh, uh, video clip of people who received the Bible, the word of God for the first time in their lives. And, 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 you, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be uh, interesting. They, they never had the Bible uh, given to them in their hand. Uh, they're believers, but uh, they've been missionary, but they've never received the Bible in their hand. And, and so I'm waiting to see who these people are going to be. And to no shock, almost to my uh, 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 not surprise, uh, uh, there were people who looked like me. There were people who in this country, I won't call the country, people who uh, uh, had their headdress and their garb on, their mud cloth and, and all of their, their garb and their, head, their feathers and, and all of them were uh, 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 black or uh, brown people. And here they were receiving uh, uh, these uh, packages of Bibles written in their language for the first time, the King James Version, most likely, of the Bible that they are receiving. And they are literally thousands of people receiving uh, these Bibles that from these other cultures that had presented the Bibles to them. They get off the airplanes and 
give them their packages of the Bible. And we, the people that look like you and me, they begin to cry. And it was so powerful. They begin to pray and thank God for receiving this blessing of the Bible. And what just, just got to me and really stirred me was hear these people who haven't seen but yet still believe. Bring it, bring it, bring it on to the history even of the church. Never heard, but yet still believe. Never seen his voice. Uh, never heard his voice. Never seen him physically. Uh, never still believe just just by the word of God and, and being uh, uh, being uh, brought the, the missionaries bringing the word and, and causing them to know Christ and believe. But here we are today. In America, we are we have people who 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 in spite of what is really interesting, dynamics is I'm talking to a people who historically, we're talking about the history, who historically are believing a gospel that was intended to keep this people subjected and in a position of being dominated and to keep them enslaved. So here you have a church that we're talking about, right? We're talking about the black church in the center of the culture who literally are, have had the gospel preached to them and they have believed and in spite of everything they have heard and seen, they still believe even though many of them an hour later uh, uh, minutes later, we're going to be back on the plantation. Uh, uh, they hear the preaching of the gospel uh, uh, from this uh, a slave master or, or whoever, and then they go back to the plantation. Some of them will be beat. Many of them will be snatched. Their uh, uh, children will be taken away. Mothers will be separated from fathers and, and sisters from brothers. But yet, they still believe. So I'm here to challenge us. Why? Because many times, even in spite of, check this out, some of the most, it has been said that black uh, 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 Christians are some of the most devout believers in the world. Yet, if you look at the fact that when you look all around you, you see no representation of you. Oh, I know it's scary. It might be my last Sunday. Uh, you look all around you and you see no rep. And, and it's been understood that representation is critical to a people's faith. In anything, if you're going to succeed in anything, it is important that you have what? Representation. If you're going to succeed in sport, you, uh, representation is a, I need to see somebody like me do it. And look at us. In spite of not having any representation, Still believe. And yet, we believe. It's deep. It's a deep thought. I, I know that you can just got to understand. Uh, you can break it down. And I know we've tried to, over the years, especially in the 80s, tried to break it down and, and try to Africanize uh, of the gospel and try to bring us in and try, try to help. But, but it, 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 as much as we tried, it kept getting kind of just broken back down. We got back to where we are. Many times I remember growing up in those houses, right? In our houses, it didn't matter which house you go into, Aunt Mamie's, Aunt Sue, uh, Uncle Jimmy's, it didn't matter. You saw three big main pictures on the wall. Yep. There was a blonde head, the blue eyed, uh, uh, Jesus the Christ, the European uh, 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 picture of Jesus. There was your one, Martin Luther King Jr. In between. And then on the far right would be John F. Kennedy. <laughs> I mean, you went through many of our houses and that's what happened. But yet, I, I'm painting the picture, and yet we believe. Somebody say, and yet we believe. Oh, I just to put a little tension in this, I remember Karl Marx talking about it. He said, Karl Marx said, what's happening? He said, uh, these people tripped me out because what? And, and then the Black Panthers kind of picked it up. Malcolm X picked it up too. He said, look at them. Uh, what's really happening is their religion has become the opium of the people. 
Religion <clears throat> seems to be the opium of the people. In other words, we get drunk, we get, we get delusional, we get everything off of our religion. And we, it's almost like we could care less and we're not thinking straight. But it's the truth in the sense that, that, that yes, Mark sees it as that. But when you go further, you realize it is this faith that has made us whole. It is the faith of the people that has made them whole. And when you understand this, look at what Lowry said, uh, Reverend Joseph Lowry said. He says, these people, he says, who are they? Who are these people? He says, who are these? I don't know whether the faith produces them or if they produce the faith. I don't know whether faith produces them or they produce the faith. But what I do know is they both belong to each other. I don't know whether the faith is producing them or they are producing the faith. But all I know is they are producing each other. It is the black church. It is the black church. What is the black church? It is and it was the cultural pot that black people created to combat what? The system designed to crush their spirit. You gotta understand that people use uh, many times this Bible, this word of God to really, to literally crush us. They thought it was gonna kill us. They thought it was gonna keep us down. But and still, somebody say, and still we rise. And it's amazing how even with the gospel that, that was used to try to keep us uh, subjugated was the same gospel that people like Nat Turner found a way to take that same King James Version and spin it and say, oh no, oh no. But, but this is the word that we're going to use to get us free, to cause what us to become rebellious against what is everything. Oh, you, you know, you know who I'm talking about. He's talked about it. The role of the black Christian or Christianity motivating our country's largest slave rebellion. It was Nat Turner, his rebellion in Southampton County, Virginia is the only most dramatic example of the text of the King James Bible being called upon to justify the violent revolution or revolutionaries to overthrow the slave regime. So, okay, you want to use this against me? I'm going to take this same Bible and I'm going to use it to get my people free. I'm going to use the same word to show you how Though you tried to bring it upon me, though you tried to use it to keep me down, the same Bible, the same word, all oh, in the hands of a Nat Turner, changes everything, changes the way things look, changes the way we think about it. But we need only look. Uh, uh, Hearing Lewis Gates says in most of his writing, uh, in this writing that we look at, we need only look at the brilliant use of the church in all of its forms, from W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, his uh, triptych of the preacher, the music, and the frenzy. The preacher, the music, and the frenzy. To the use of the building itself to see the revolutionary potential and practice of black Christianity in forging what? Social change. It are only us would have this all of these atrocities brought on us. But but look at these people. Look at the black church. In spite of that, they use it to launch revolutionary change and social change. Oh, without the black church, without the black church, uh, 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 what happens? The role of the black church uh, in civil rights, the act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 signed into law by President Lyndon Johnson with King sitting and standing by his side and both and the future Congressman John Lewis himself an ordained Baptist minister present in 1965. What happens? They would never have been erected or enacted when they were, if it were not for the black church. There's no question that the black church is a presence and is the parent of today's even Black Lives Matter. 
It is the black church that is the parent of the civil rights movement. It is the black church that is today's movement. And it is so many, there are so many heirs of what? The black church. It is what it is because of the black church. When you think about it, many of those um, planning meetings, uh, they were started. Those coming together of people from around uh, our country came together where in the basements of black churches. Those meetings were started. Those pastors, uh, those leaders were leading uh, this march. It happened where? Around the black church. Somebody say around the black church. So when we understand that it is the cultural part, it is the cultural part that black people created to do what? Combat the system that tried to keep them down. So you got to understand that the black church is at the center of black history. The black church is at the center of of black history. I don't have the time that I want to take uh, to just really pour this out, but you got enough to understand that at the center of black history is the black church. And you got something to be proud of, folks. I lift your heads up. You got to you got to put a smile on your face because why? And yet we still believe. And yet we still but with all that has been done, and yet we still believe. With all we have witnessed, we still say what? Give me Jesus. You can have the whole wide world. 